made these assignments. I think this will go faster if I'm not interrupted, don't you? I'm meeting with the Organization of Cartographers for Social Equality. Yes. What do map makers have to do with social equality? I guess you're about to find out. Well, probably not, because I won't really be listening to them. The block. Look, what else is there? I've got cartographers for social equality. So now you have two choices, meeting with an unruly mob or meeting with lunatic map makers. Or Hi, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry to be late. Not a problem. I'm CJ Craig. Of course you are. I'm Dr. John Fallow. This is Dr. Cynthia Sales and uh, Professor Donald Huke. Huke? Huke. Okay, and you are the Organization of Cartographers for Social Equality. Well, we're, uh, we're from the OCSE. We have many members. How many? 4,300 dues-paying members. What are the dues? Uh, $20 a year for the newsletter. Let's start. Wait, wait, I want to see this. This is Josh Lyman. Indeed you are. Josh, this is Dr. Fallow and Hi. his merry men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should we begin? Yes. Plain and simple, uh, we'd like President Bartlett to aggressively support legislation that would make it mandatory for every public school in America to teach geography using the Peters projection map instead of the traditional Mercator. Give me 200 bucks and it's done. Really? No. Why are we changing maps? Uh, because, CJ, the Mercator projection has fostered European imperialist attitudes for centuries and created an ethnic bias against the Third World. Really? The German cartographer, Mercator, originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But. Yes. It distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh, dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is, in reality, 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe, drawn considerably larger than South America. When it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico, when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, wait. Relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. Where is it? I'm glad you asked. The Peters projection. It has fidelity of axis. Fidelity of position. East-west lines are parallel and intersect north-south axes at right angles. What the hell is that? It's where you've been living this whole time. Should we continue? Uh-huh. So, you're probably wondering what all of this has to do with social equality. No, I'm wondering where France really is. Guys, we want to thank you very much for coming in. Hang on, we're going to finish this. Okay. What do maps have to do with social equality, you ask? She asked. Salvatore Natoli of the National Council for Social Studies argues, in our society, we unconsciously equate size with importance and even power. I'm going to check in on Tommy. Go. These guys find Brigadoon on that map, you'll call me, right? Probably not. Okay. When third world countries are misrepresented, they're likely to be valued less. When Mercator maps exaggerate the importance of Western civilization, when the top of the map is given to the Northern Hemisphere and the bottom is given to the Southern, then people will tend to adopt top and bottom attitudes. But wait, how... where else could you put the Northern Hemisphere but on the top? On the bottom. How? Like this. Yeah, but you can't do that. Why not? Because it's freaking me out. 